Welcome to the next video on SQLite programming. In this video we'll talk about how to program against the SQLite database. I know in previous videos we've done mostly uh, queries and how to use the SQLite command line tool but this time we'll be actually programming. We'll be programming using the Ruby programming language and the Amalgalite uh, gem for interfacing with the SQLite uh, API. Uh, you can use the SQLite 3 gem or the amalgamite gem. So for example, if you go gem list minus local, you'll notice that I have somewhere, <laughs> come on, you have the uh, amalgamite gem listed. There we go. Amalgamite right up here. Okay, now if I do a gem list uh, SQLite 3 minus remote. It'll go to the remote source and uh, and you'll notice that there's the SQLite 3 gem remotely. Either gem can be used. Um, I prefer to use the Amalgalite gem just because it has uh, a lot of the SQLite compile options and you can use a whole bunch of other goodies besides your run-of-the-mill SQLite. But you know it really doesn't matter which one you use. All right. Uh, the other thing I'm going to be doing is using the interactive Ruby shell so that uh, we can uh, program as we go along. Um, any statement that you execute in the interactive Ruby shell can also be executed in a legal re Ruby program. The SQLite API really has three main functions. The new function creates a new database handle, which opens the SQLite file. The execute uh, API executes an SQL, -like, SQL statement against the SQL database and the close command um, closes the database by closing the file. Uh, the execute command can be statements that write, for example, create table, uh, insert, um, delete, update, or it can be select statements which query. When you run a select statement, an array of arrays is, written, is, re is returned with the result set. Um, these APIs are generally the same no matter which language you pick, whether it's C or Python or Ruby or PHP or Java, whatever. So, you know, this tutorial should help with any of the other languages. Let's get into it. First, you start by running the interactive Ruby shell. You require Ruby gems. <coughs> you require Amalgalite. And then you go, you start off by, oops, you start off by um, creating, okay, my copy paste isn't working, that's fine. So you go db equals, um, db equals, hang on, amalgalite, so amalgalite's a namespace, database, dot new, test.db. Okay, so that creates, so if you go db.open, the answer is true. You can see right here. Okay, um, once you open the database, you can do things like db.methods, etc. I mean, this is Ruby. It's very reflective. Okay, next thing you can do, just cleaning a little space here on the screen, is um, db.execute. First thing I'm going to do is create a table with uh, an ID as an integer and name as a, a string. Okay. And just hang on, did I get everything? Yes. Okay. So now I've created a table. And if you go back and actually look at test.db, you'll see the file that created the table. The uh, next thing I can do is db.execute. Actually, I'm just use the memory. Um, I'm going to insert into test values 1j. Insert in, yep, that's right. And I can re I can insert a few values into the table. And it's just standard insert stuff into a table. 
Okay, now if I go a equals, um, okay, what I'll do, okay, then what I'll do is a, oh, sorry, I'll use Q, query, q equals db.execute, and I'm going to do a select, select everything from test. Now watch this. You'll notice q re, 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 returns an array of arrays. In Ruby, an array is surrounded by a square bracket. And this is an array, and it has three arrays in it. Um, and each of those arrays contain uh, the ID and a string, which are exactly the ones I put in here. Now you can also, when you insert into the database, instead of instead of putting in hard-coded parameters, because obviously in a program you're going to you're going to uh, use variables, right? You can uh, you can do things like uh, insert into test values. Uh, yes. Okay, so that's your query string, and then what you do, there's two optional extra parameters. Well, actually, it's as many parameters as you need for these question marks, which and these parameters are bound. So you can say, let's say, for and uh, 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 k. Oh, I'll use a different name, tray. Okay. And then again, if you use this, if you do the select, you'll see now for and tray got in. Okay, so in programming, you may have this particular query hard coded, but be with, because it has the question marks, you can bind variables to the query and execute variable stuff. Um, you can also do things like create a new ID equals five, five, and you can go new name equals Babu, and then you can insert into the table instead of saying four which is again hard code use a variable new ID and new name and then again if we run that select you'll see that five and Babu got in as the uh, new ID and new name this means you can have you can do things like gather data from you know input devices, keyboards, mouse, whatever, and then um, and then put them into program variables, and then use the canned SQL like qu SQL queries to insert them into the database. Um, now in Ruby, if you want to, uh, you can also format the data. In Ruby, db.execute um, actually takes a block, can take a block as a parameter. Um, so you can go db.execute, and what it does it for each, what it does is each time it'll run the block for each row in the table in the result set. So that's why you can go do, and it'll cough up a row. Okay, so the row is the internal array, and you can do something like for each row you can put string um, row ID if you remember from way back ID was the name of the ID, ID field and you have to convert it to string plus and we just have a separator string and then plus plus is just for concatenating strings and you go row name now you may be wondering how does Ruby know this? Well, SQLite actually has a uh, schema table and so Ruby, part of the API, is able to get the names of the fields from the schema table and then associate them with the uh, return result. And that's why we can do this. And then if we go end, you'll see now that all the uh, all the items were dumped properly. And of course because we're in the interactive Ruby shell, all this junk gets dumped as well. So that's pretty well all there is to, you know, programming SQLite. It works again, same kind of APIs, whether it's C or Python or Java or PHP or, you know, whatever language that has bindings for SQLite. And uh, that's pretty well all there is to programming in SQLite. Once you master this, um, it really just comes down to where do you get your data and how do you plan to store it? It becomes a data design problem and, and a problem of figuring out your inputs and outputs. So, 
I hope this makes you uh, better at using SQL Lite in your applications and even a better programmer. <laughs>